Alright, so today we're going to learn how to use the mortar both directly and indirectly. So first we'll start with direct. You hop into your mortar and you see we have this uh, enemies a mark. There are three main components to using the mortar. First is the charge, which can be changed by pressing the change fire mode key. That's the same as your ordinary rifle. And you need to pay attention to the two boxes on the bottom left and right of the targeting screen. So as you can see at the moment uh, on the bottom right we have ELV and REL. The ELV is uh, what the elevation of our mortar barrel currently is at so it's around 49 or 48 degrees and the REL below that is what we need to uh, change it to in order to hit the target we're aiming at. As you can see if I change fire mode this is on short mode at the moment. You can see we can't get a firing solution. If I change it to medium, we can get a firing solution. And if I change it to far, we can also get a firing solution. If you noticed when I switched it to medium, on the bottom left, the TRV is 28, indicating it will be a 28 second travel time. And when I switch to far, that increases to 40 seconds. This can be used to double up on mortar strikes if you if you have a stopwatch on you. So we're going to firstly use it on a, a medium range first. We're outside of the short range band which is why it will give us a uh, X in the middle saying that we cannot fire at that target. So you use the page up and page down keys to increase and decrease the elevation of your target's uh, to your target. As you can see the uh, mortar is quite high up now and all we have to do is line it up and pull the trigger. So yeah, even though we aimed at the target the mortar landed over there which is something we can expect to happen. You can mitigate this by firing uh, quicker. Uh, the mortar is probably the best indirect weapon as it has a very very high fire rate so now that we've uh, completed a direct firing tutorial, we're going to move on to indirect. The most important tool you'll need is from the AGM modification, it is the map tools. This will allow us to get our azimuth and range correct, which we'll then use in comparison with a range table to correctly orient the elevation of the mortar barrel. So we'll hop into our mortar here, open our map, as you can see, this is where the target's going to be. Assume that uh, a squad leader has placed this here and someone has relayed it to us that it needs to be taken out. Bring up your self interaction menu on the AGM modification and you'll see in the map screen this map tools button has appeared. Click that and you're going to hit show normal map tool. It'll probably spawn down in the bottom left over here. So what we want you to do is bring this black dot in the center of the map tool right over your position. You may, need, you may need a GPS from this or have someone else figure it out for you. Now what we're going to do is hold control, left click at the same time and drag the tool over to the direction of MT1. Sometimes if the target is uh, too close you may need to switch to a smaller version of the map tool. It is still in scale and you will not suffer uh, from range difficulties as a result of it. I'll just delete those markers I placed. And you can see that we're roughly in line with the MT1 marker. And we can see that we now have an azimuth which is 26.1, that's 27, that's 28, etc. If we close our map and quickly hop out for a second, we can see that on our map, on our compass, we have those same numbers on the outer ring of the compass. So we know that 26.1 is roughly over that direction. So we'll hop into our mortar and correct map. Uh, one problem with the mortar is it doesn't have azimuth, it only uses compass bearings. 
so you may have to substitute the azimuth for the compass instead. So that brings us to there. At 147. So we have the direction we'll be facing, but we don't have the range. That's where the inbuilt measuring uh, equipment comes in on the map tools. So we're going to take the corner of the map tool and put it straight over MT1. As we're already oriented correctly, it will match up with our mortar position. So we'll take a note of we are at least one kilometer away. I'll quickly make a small dot on the map. Then we will move the rest of the map tools back over to this dot. Count up. Uh, the map tool goes up in, in uh, iterations of 100 meters. So 100, 200, 300, 400. So we're just underneath uh, 1,400 meters. As 10 plus uh, 100, or 10 times 100 is 1,000. So we have 1,400 meters as our range. Now what we have to do is use a range uh, table to figure out what um, elevation that our weapon needs to be at. So we've consulted the table, and according to the table, we should be around 67.03 elevation, give or take. Uh, one thing to note is a forward observer is almost necessary with indirect fire as it means you'll be able to um, correct the shots that miss and go wide etc because sometimes a missed shot may not actually be the mortar being uh, swayed by wind it may be your calculations are wrong so we'll fire off this is on uh, medium charge and the target is around 1400 meters away as you can see this is the Zamark quite the ways off from where the Zamark was. Now, the good thing is, if we had a for forward observer, say on that hill, they would be able to tell us that the shot went wide in what direction, and obviously, as it quite looks like we've overshot the target, we'll know that our elevation is either too high or too low. Uh, in this case, it's probably too uh, low. So we'll be able to bring that up, bring this in to somewhere that will be able to hit the target more effectively. So let's try 71 elevation. Okay. Okay, so that's much better. One thing about indirect fire with mortars is it is a very um, lengthy process without the artillery computer helping you. But it does mean you get a bit more, uh, I suppose, intimate with the controls. And sometimes you can pull off more accurate uh, shots than what the computer will let you do. So this has been an A3G uh, tutorial on how to use the mortar both directly and indirectly, uh, made by Robert. Uh, have a good day.